What's up, everybody? It's Side Five Gaming here. GBO Two update number twenty. Whew. Well, well, I had some. Uh, I got some other tokens this morning, just to try my luck again for the Alex and Camphor. <laughs> As you see right there, walked around the back of the shop. Uh, you know, if you're superstitious, try it out. Who knows? So, I was trying a different strategy here. You know, I had another 30 tokens, and I just told myself that if I get the suits that I want to get before I spend all 30, then I'm just going to stop right there. You know, so instead of doing a, a, a 30 roll, you know, a, a 10 item roll, I was just going to do single rolls and, and see how that worked. And I really like that strategy. Boom, as you see right there out of the gate, getting the Alex. Uh, that was awesome. Just walking up and getting Alex off a single roll. It always feels good when you get him off single rolls. Um, so, and I mean, that's kind of another thing to it. So, I just wanted to, I, I just think that's going to be the strategy I'm going to use from now. Instead of ever doing a 30 roll, I'm just going to roll. And if, you know, if I'm, if I want to roll 10 for 10 items, if I'm willing to, to roll for 10 items, <laughs> got another Alex. Yes. Oh my God. Back to back. Alex is ridiculous. Um, if I wanted, if I was willing to, you know, spend 30, to you know, 30, spend 30 tokens for 10 items and I got everything that I wanted to get on the, on those drops, you know, after on item number nine, then I would just stop right there and save that last token. So it's kind of a good strategy. I think if you're, if you don't want to spend all of your tokens at one time, but you'd like to shoot for it and it just gives you that ability to not spend them all, you know? Going through, haven't hit 30 tokens yet. Getting some more normal stuff that I already had. The Jimmy Cannon, the FS, the Zaku Cannon. Roll again. Down to 25. <laughs> I guess I'm contemplating it right there. Oh, different sound. Now it's a gaw. Uh oh. Blammo! There he is. <laughs> Man, that model looks super cool. That picture, I should say, um, looks really awesome. It just look, it looks a little different from some of the other ones, but they did a really good job on that, on that artwork. So, boom! There we go. Really happy. Um, you know, didn't have to spend another thirty tokens. Just doing single rolls, so try it out next time. So awesome. Let's see here. Let me get some. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so really cool. Knocked out the Alex and the Camphor with those. And getting to the rest of the update, as you can see, this guy is still rocking his Halloween costume. <laughs> Guess somebody uh, had a funny idea to do that. That's really funny. He's still. He's still complaining, and she's still uh, not having it. Coming out here, everything is nice and snowy. Winter Wonderland. Got our uh, grand opening blow-up Santa Claus up there. Got another one way out there in the field, uh, right outside the gate. Literally hanging out. Got our, our nice giant Christmas tree here. Throwing some snowballs. Really cool. So when you guys go and pick up your... Your Christmas hats from the reward center here. Special reward Christmas hat number one and reindeer headband number one as well. When you put those on, you have to be wearing one of these to do that. You can walk over here, anywhere out here, and click square and start a snowball fight. And it's really fun. I think uh, John, uh, yeah, John and I were kind of messing around. After the after our yesterday's session concluded, that was really fun. Really funny stuff going on. If you keep clicking, and you'll eventually throw a giant snowball. Really cool. Getting over to the good stuff. Alex and Camper in the house as usual, or, or as we said, as we were expecting, as they told us. Here's the Alex and Camper video. I think they uh, did a good job with these. The Alex and Camper. I mean, the man, that Camper. He is. A super glass cannon, if you will. Low resistances and uh, 
really high damage output. Well, we're going to take a look at those stats for both of them here in just a little bit. Really cool vid. I was on the uh, receiving end of one of those mine whip counters from the camper last night. That was pretty awesome. Checking out what we have over here in the computer. Christmas event. Yep, we still got the 50% off the 53 tokens. An excellent deal if you're a token, token purchasing person. Absolutely sick looking banner for the Alex and the Camphor. Really loving the, the artwork for this one. Both three star mobile suits. Uh, if you look in the bottom right hand corner area, you can see the act guy throwing his hands up in the air way, way, way in the back. Really funny. And then, yes, of course, the new map, Deserted City, New York, to some people. Uh, they did a good job. It is just the updated version from GB01. Just a little refresh, a little reskin. Updated the textures a little bit. And that was about it. And they added a little uh, info infogram here on uh, the, what the daily crates might contain and whatnot. Uh, they added that. And something about the monthly MS bonus as well. <clears throat> Moving on, checking out the store. What's over here in the supply center? We got the pretty girl flanked by a uh, a ball snowman and the uh, the Haro snowman. Pretty cute. Standard lottery. The step up is coming up next week, I believe. Look at the mobile suits. We got the GM Command level one and high mobility Zaku. That's the R one. Level 3, and then Jim Sniper Custom Level 3 in the DP shop. Uh, let's see, just three suits in there left for me to get. So I'm done with those. Also, Boombox Level 3, finally. Uh, I was lucky enough to get that on a roll, I think, during the Barrage event. Uh, Heathawk Enhanced Level 3, and the R4 Type Beam Rifle for that Sniper Custom to go along with that Level 3 Sniper Custom. There's his rifle. Custom parts, quick loader level two and auxiliary generator generator level two. Now these were on offer for recycle tickets only uh, a while back, but now they're here in the DP shop in the custom parts section. Those uh, I, I liked the lo I definitely use the loader, the quick loader, a lot more than I use auxiliary generator level two. Um, that's probably just the nature of the you know the suits that I tend to play a lot more ballistic suits and stuff like that. But lo Quick Loader Level 2 is awesome. It is a 6% um, decrease in the amount of time it takes for a ballistic weapon to fully reload. And it's not in between rounds for rocket launchers. It's when the magazine is completely empty. To get a new magazine in the weapon, it, it reduces it by 6%. So if you combine that with Loader Level 1 and Level 2, you get a 9% decrease in the amount of time it takes to reload your ballistic weapons. And coming over, let's see, clothing accessories, nothing in there. But I can see it's any different. Recycle shop. Mobile suits. Um, nothing there. Nothing new for me. Um, everything pretty quiet over here. Normally, they would have something interesting, at least on the front page, but nothing doing. So... All that being said, uh, there have been some other changes to the game. Um, nothing too drastic, but you know they they did sneak in a, a couple of um, you know modifications or and updates, uh, fixes uh, to the game as well. In the patch, uh, went over some connectivity issues. They now have the the host migration is in the game uh, that does not work in custom matches it only works um, for if the host gets disconnected from say a rating match or a quick match I believe so that's gonna be nice instead of you know just losing everything from from a match if, if the if the host disc goes on you also they have the new um, pursuit stopped um, it's like uh, it comes up in the kill feed, but it also comes up on your screen underneath your reticle. Uh, 
the, per, the pursuit stopped signal, I guess, if you will. Um, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a good job or kind of like a digital pat on the back for if, if one of your buddies like gets knocked down and he's about to get hacked and you stun the guy who's about to hack him and keep him from, you know, basically a savior getting either a savior kill or just stopping the, you know, the, the downswing from happening or your buddy getting beat up. Basically you've stopped the enemy from pursuing, uh, you, you know, causing damage to your friendly so you get a little a little blip comes up underneath your reticle that says pursuit stopped and he'll be notified as, of that as well in the kill feed you know that he's the guy who saved you kind of cool i guess you know hooray for teamwork really need to see that kind of stuff um the type 61 tank is also in the game on the city map and that thing i haven't got to try the magella tank yet again i mean again since the type 61 came out but the Type 61 feels about 200% better than the Magellan tank on the desert map and the other maps that we already have that have that tank. This one has a movable turret. It flies around the battlefield, man. Like, I mean, not not literally, but on you know on its treads, it is extremely quick. It is extremely quick on the ground, just zooming around like a go kart. Uh, you know, with two with twin cannons on it. It's got two different types of ammo. It's got standard ballistic ammo and, uh, you know, the armor piercing round, the HE round. And then it ha also has a, uh, a cluster round in there as well. So really cool. It's got more options. It's faster. It's more mobile. The controls do get a little, uh, a, a little funky if you turn the tank around, you know, if you happen to, you know, keep the turret facing the enemy and you turn the, the, the chassis around, um, it... It gets a little a little funky because it's your if you always push you always push forward to go forward so um, it's a little it's a little easy to get turned around in that thing if you're not careful because it is so slippery absolutely slippery with how quick it is checking out the NT1 model really cool I really like how they've been doing this and changing the models up for us out here in the uh, in the common area so let's go out ahead and check out the uh, check out some of the stats of those new suits so here we have Gundam Alex level 1 450 it is a three star suit ha does not have a ground or space specialization but it is available for ground and space combat 13,000 health and moving down from there 17 17 15 so just two points down um, on the anti-melee, on his melee resistance. Uh, range mod is 25, a nice number there, and melee mod is 19. So a nice, nice round setup. Very similar to to what the Gundam has. The Gundam also was a little down on on his melee, on his anti-melee mod as well. So you know, pretty pretty easy fix with that. He could because he's got plenty of part slots. Right there, 14 close range, 12 medium range, and 6 long range slots. Um, you know, with his, with his thruster speed and his walking speed thruster is 60, and his cruising speed is 130. So he's he's uh, not that much faster than your standard RX-78-2. Um, but that being said, he does have all kinds of good skills for, for space because he does have the high spec AMBAC. That is really, really awesome, uh, obviously for any of our space bound mobile suits. Looking at the rest of the skills uh, down here, high performance radar, 350 meters, uh, two hit melee combo, hyperbalancer, EAC level two, really interesting. Again, this allows you to do two dodge rolls. Um, with the, as it says right there, the emergency evasion with a reduced drain on the thrusters. And then leg shock absorber level 3. So 15% after jumping, 10% after evasive maneuvers or boosting. And 1% recovery time from the, the when the gray bar starts filling up that load on your, on your legs. Excuse me. Um, what else can we see? MS explanation, there you have it. 0080. Really cool time. 
magnetic coating technology using the G3 Gundam to increase reaction speeds. Really cool. So happy that these are in English now. But yep, if you didn't know, yep, of course from 0080 in the War in the Pocket. Now, moving on down to the camphor. Camphor, 450, level 1, ground and space capable. No compatibility buffs. Space or ground. Takes 15 seconds to sortie again. Was that the same on, on the Alex? Yep, they both fit, takes 15 seconds. Now, looking at its stats. Uh, 1,000 less health than the Alex. 12,000 health. Uh, range mod is 6. Air, the, anti, the resistances go 6, 6, and 21. So, very, very squishy to start off with for its anti-ballistic and anti-beam ratings. But, you know... A lot there to hold up in a melee fight. He's good to go with 21 already. And then ready to dish out the punishment with a range mod of 30 and a melee mod of 30. Ground speed is 130 and then the thrusters are already set to 75. This thing can move. Um, although, I mean, it does have the low, you know, resistances there. But I think with the part slots being 16, you know, close range, 10, medium range, and 6 for the long range that just having those six long range slots on the bottom if you didn't want to add armor and you didn't want to add any more ranged mod you could easily add anti-beam to and anti anti-ballistic to 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 that loadout so that would look something like this actually i need to go back and show you guys the weapons and stuff for the alex as well um so you could start off with something like this and that would bring you that would bump you up to 12 a piece for your anti for your ballistic resistances and your and your beam resistances, but that being said, it is um, you know it is kind of a glass a glass stun cannon if you will, because as you can see here he's got the he's got the shotgun. Um, he does use the same shotgun as the Afrit. Right, as you can see, because I have the level two of that one as well. So shotgun there, beam saber is very strong at a level one, doing two thousand damage, and that thing has some sick range on it as well. Giant uh, back giant bazooka times two, 900 rounds a piece, 300 meters, 10 rounds, and very similar to you know all of, all of the G3, very similar there, and then Sturmfaust times two. Uh, that's uh, man, if, if that's 1500 damage per. I mean, I'm assuming it is as as it is for those when those are within 200 meters, only have two rounds. Obviously, fire at the same time. That's that's a big heavy damage hit it right there to this thing could just crush raids easily uh, with this setup and then he does have Vulcans oh my goodness Xeon suit with Vulcans very few and far in between for those um, doing a good amount of damage though look at that with the late model Vulcan 80 damage for shot 150 meters and 80 rounds in the magazine that's that's impressive for a Vulcan setup so um, played against these last night you know, yeah, they die easy enough if you're shredding them with bullets. I think that's a good way to go. Shotgun rounds, bullets, uh, cannon rounds, and stuff like that. But the issue here comes in when we start looking at his skills. Again, he's got uh, he's got quick boost level three, so that means he can jump a little bit sooner than anybody else. He does have EAC level one, so he does have a single dodge roll, not a double dodge roll, a hyper balancer. But he does have maneuver armor, so even though he doesn't have a lot of health and a lot of resistances, he does have maneuver armor and EAC. Uh, always a deadly combination in there. Melee combat controller level, uh, level 1, giving him a 2 hit combo. And then he also has AMBAC. Gonna be really cool to see this thing in space. Um, <laughs> that's all there is too. I'm just really excited to, to use this thing in space and check it out. Uh, forced Injector level 2. This is a special skill that they talked about on the website. I was gonna talk about it earlier when we were talking about you know game changes and you know the connectivity issues and everything else. But this is one of the things they were talking about. Something with well, let's just read it. Force injector level two. Landing after evasive maneuvers can be canceled with high speed movement, and another evasive maneuver can be performed. Well, they said that they're gonna either change the verbiage on this, or that the skill doesn't work correctly. I am not sure on that. Um, maybe somebody else can help me out in the comments. And obviously, I'll, I mean, I'll find out more whenever I go and test it. Now, what they were saying is that it's actually supposed to help with the drain on your thruster gauge. It's actually supposed to reduce the amount of, of thruster that you're using up 
from force to having force injector level two. At least that's what I understand uh, with the way I read it. it. You know, obviously the Google Translate for their website is not that not that great. So just bear with me moving forward um, on on that information and definitely hit me up in the chat or somewhere else, maybe on the disco, um, and let me know how that works because that's a really interesting. I don't think we've seen anybody else with force injector level two. This is a new skill. So, and I was just talking about this with somebody else about hoping that they had a part or something that would allow, uh, allow you, you know, you get the drain on your thrusters to be lower, not just the cool down. So anyway, as you can see here, um, don't have enough slots to, to map all the weapons, but it's not very hard to, uh, you know, remap them. Uh, as you would like. So let's see, if I was to put the Vulcans up there, there'd be nothing after that. That would just take me back to the shotgun. So we'll probably just leave it you know, as the uh, as the rockets and then go from Sturmfaust to Vulcans if we have to. <clears throat> probably pull something off. Now let's go back and check out the Alex and go check out the rest of its, uh, its equipment, skills and stuff. So here we are. The the question marks here refer to the bazooka that you can see him use, which I believe is a proprietary weapon uh, for him on the, uh, you can see him use it in the video when he kneels down behind that gigantic shield of his and uh, starts uh, laying down some fire with it. But here we are, the uh, Alex Beam rifle, I believe this is the NT1 rifle, or as referred to that, or was the way it's referred to in battle record. I always refer back to that game as one of my favorites. Uh, a lot of equipment, a lot of the similar stuff there. So power is uh, 950. Now that might seem a little low, but the thing is this thing charges up super quick. Uh, the range is 400, so good range on that. And the uh, heat capacity is 30. Has Let's see where it says for traits, has high all around specs and can focus fire for increased damage. Beam Saber. Alex Beam Saber is also a proprietary weapon, doing 2100 damage at level 1. Looking good there. Uh, we have his arm mounted 90mm Catlin Cannon. Pretty short barrels. 90mm? Um, okay. Um, 125 damage a shot, 150 uh, meters range, and 45 rounds in the magazine. Uh, this thing stuns pretty pretty well, so that's it's got that going for it. Um, really cool to see this in the game, though. A really fun weapon. Um, Vulcan as well, late model, 67 damage. That's not as much as the Camphor's Vulcans. Um, so 67 damage on there, 150 meters, 30 rounds in the magazine. So the Camphor's Vulcans, man, just really killing it in the in the Vulcan department. Let's see, 3,000 HP for that large shield. HP. So let's see. So 67, 150 meters, 30 rounds. Going back down to the camphor. One of those Vulcans. It was 80 damage a shot. Same range, but 80 rounds in the magazine. They really let you just go to town with those Vulcans. That's awesome. That's going to be fun. I guess you wouldn't want to hang out in front of your enemy for very long using them as it is. Um, maybe that's so that he can have, since I, I, I imagine that they balance this with a large magazine. Because if this is reloading, and this is reloading, and the shotgun's reloading, you're going to be waiting for a little bit. Because uh, he only has a shotgun as a primary selectable weapon. So you can easily dump all... You, you can empty the magazine in all three of these weapons really quickly. So that kind of makes sense to me of why they would have an 80-round uh, you know, magazine for his Vulcans. Just so he has something, some kind of ranged uh, damage output. And they do have a hefty... Uh, Hefty amount of output right there. Looking good with that range mod. Already adding 30% to that. So he's going to shoot real well. Uh, and if you didn't want to add any more resistances and you did add more shooting capability, shooting program level 3, shooting program level 1, boom, 39, almost 40% more output with your ranged weapons. Looking good for that. Plenty of uh, close range slots up there to enhance that melee. if we just add all of them, adding plus 14% for a total of 44% output. Still with a lot left on there. Um, I think it's still quite a bit left on the table. You know, 16 slots, 8 left. So, a lot of good can be done there with those. Let's clear these out. 
Alrighty. Um, check out some of the paint, actually. I've had a, I was having a lot of fun with messing around with the different paint jobs. I really like this one. Need, need to adjust the red on the bottom there. Here he is in the tropical. Kind of a standard, my standard desert, tropical desert camo. And the Titans-ish, Titans-esque paint job that I, uh, I use a lot. Coming over to the camphor. Let's see, did I put this one on there? Yeah. Let's see, this is the dark one from my Hymos with that glossy black. But I, uh, and he looks really good in this, in this tropical as well. Those green accents. And that darker tan looks really awesome, ready for desert combat. And then here's the the look that I really like. It looks really awesome with that high gloss, glossy red paint underneath popping out from underneath the flat uh, bluish gray armor. Really digging the way this looks and this came out. Now you can add you can add some details as you can see right here. So you, all these little thrusters you can make those red like this, which looks pretty cool. But I was thinking it was just a little bit too much red for me. Just to keep it a little subtle. And just go in there with the uh, with the full gloss black. Maybe even try the, you know, make it a chrome. Something like this. Add some more shine to it. That, that looks pretty cool. Also, as you can see here, the where the wording, they changed, they uh, kind of did a little a little cleaning up here in the paint shop department the red green blue specular and highlight the the font there has been has been adjusted so let me see i would like to i'm going to check run this real quick and then i'm going to take a quick peek uh see if there's anything i mixed from uh, our buddy cow over here in our, in our subreddit uh, the host migration, you have to talk about that. Yep, load times uh, should be improved. Also, yeah, you guys are going to notice that there's a Haro icon next to people, so you can tell if somebody is still selecting a mobile suit. You'll be able to tell that um, when you're when you're waiting for a, a match to start, so you can see if they're messing with their suit or not. That's a really, really nice touch that they added there. Um... When I was, yeah, new more more penalties. I was thinking uh, in the translation, it was saying it looked like that they had reduced the penalty, uh, but uh, what Cow is saying from his translation is that they in increased the penalties and they making made it more severe for leaving or disconnecting from a game, uh, and it will also take longer to recover from uh, any penalty status that you incur. Uh, let's see, talked about that pretty much. Yeah. That's pretty much it. And I was looking at new levels and trying to think if there was any new levels of suits that came out. Um, there, there wasn't, there wasn't much in there. It was pretty much just the Alex and Camphor. And we still have a lot more to go in this December overall December event, um, you know, or events. Uh, we still have, we're still going to be waiting on, you know, next week, the year end, the last step up of the year, as I was saying before. Uh, and that Garrett Schmitzer Zaku one that I'm really, really, really can't, I, I'm just, man, I'm feeding for that one. Can't wait to get my hands on that suit. I, you know, I'm sure you guys heard me say it a thousand times already. That's one of my favorite suits in the franchise from, uh, from Zionic Front. And I, I can't see Mudrock being far behind that. You know the Garrett Schmitzer Zaku One Commander. If if he's there, um, I'm looking for Mudrock to show up as well. So I think that's gonna do it, guys, for GBO2 update number 20. Thanks for hanging out. I know it was a longer video, but that was a little. I just kind of wanted to cover all those things and uh, show you what I can. Thanks again, to everybody who showed up last night. Everybody was in the chat. Everybody was hanging out, and everybody who continues to show up for a drop night on Wednesdays. Well, as I said, thanks, guys, and I'll see you out there.